What's up, family? This evening we got a special guest. If you know football, man, one of the greatest fullbacks to ever play the fucking game. Man. Yeah. Houston, Texas, man. Fifth Ward, Hugo Apartments, 2008 Pro Bowler. Yes, sir. Facts. All American. In Facts. Lawrence Vickers, man. How you living? How you feeling? Man, I'm feeling good, shit. I'm living good, man. I'm blessed, bro. I'm blessed. I can't complain, man. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So we're gonna start to, you know, from from the beginning. We're gonna start at okay. the top, man. All right, um, let's talk um, there. Let's chop it up. On paper, it says you were born in Beaumont, right? Yep. Right? But you was raised in Houston. For those that don't know, he well, well, in all actuality, I was born in Louisiana. Oh, okay. I just end up um, being at the hospital in Beaumont. My mom was at the casino, mm -hmm. so she was in the casino in Lake Charles, and she ended up. About to have a baby, and she had to go to Beaumont to the closest little hospital. So that's how I was born in Beaumont. Went back to Louisiana, stayed there a while, then my mama shipped me out to Fifth Ward, straight to my daddy, bro. Is your daddy uh, from Fifth Ward? My daddy from Louisiana, all of us from Louisiana. Louisiana. Yes, sir. Okay. We've so, been in Fifth my um, old man was in Fifth Ward when he was in high school, and then he went back to Louisiana, came back and forth. That's how I ended up coming out this way. For sure. So how was it like, like just when you first moved to Fifth Ward, man? What was the, the difference? I know you were pretty young at the time, but like, what was it like for you? Man, man, that shit was like, that shit was like boys in the hood, cuz. On some real, on real life, it was like boys in the hood, man. You know what I'm saying? It was, uh, it was definitely, it was definitely, uh, you know what I'm saying, the urban community. Uh, a lot of hardworking people, but shit, it was a lot of thugging too. You know what I'm saying? Shit, only the strong ones gonna survive over there. So shit, any and everything I'm about come from Fifth Ward, bro. Yeah, that's Real talk. Learned, learned a lot. I learned everything. Even the game I use still to this day came from the ward, man. Man. So um, as we were talking earlier, you told me you started playing football young. You played park ball at the Hester House. Right? Junior C Hester House, man. I was uh, I started playing football. I was in the fourth grade. I was in the fourth grade. I was in my teacher named Miss Nick class. I was in the fourth grade, Nacu Henderson Elementary, bro. My daddy took me to the house because I've been playing baseball for the park for so long. Shit, I wanted something a little bit more physical. You know what I'm saying? Took me over there to the house to high. Shit, it was up ever since. For sure, for sure. And um, how was it? How was it like just growing up in Coke? Like, man, I know it's it's <laughs> treacherous. It's one of them one of them places. I mean, it's like that in the projects. In the I'm going to tell you. In America, but it's like, if you're not from there, I don't know nobody over there. My first time in Coke Apartments. Yeah. I'm going to tell I'm gonna give you a story. I'm walking from my house. I live I live on Coke and Swite Court, right there at the corner of Coke Apartments. My daddy had a little spot right there. Oh, shit. We walking up to Coke Apartments. My uh, auntie had a dude named Nut, named, 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 named uh, Boo. He was from Buck Time. And, bro, all I seen him doing is like walking. As soon as he walked in the Coke apartments, he was walking right by the washer tier. And the four or five niggas jump out of the car on a nigga, draw down, <clears throat> make him get up off everything. I'm talking about this bad when they was taking nigga J's and I'm young. So when I see him, they bust him down, strip him down naked right in the front, bro. This daytime. Yeah. I was like, <laughs> you hear me like, God damn. Yeah. I ain't even go home and tell my old man because I knew he wasn't going to let me go back over there. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I was just like, oh, yeah, I'm going to have to get me a stick or something, yeah. <laughs> something bro. You know what I'm saying? But that was my first encounter, my first day in Coke Apartments. That happened yeah. on me. Yeah. So we're going to go back to when you uh, was playing park ball. Man, what position did you play like in park ball? Boy, nigga. I played O lineman. Uh, real talk. That's what you think you I started O line from. I started at O line, bro. Started at O line. I wanted to play running back from the beginning, but they made me play O line because I was big and I was rough. Yeah. They ain't know me really. They probably had their picks already who they wanted to be Not this and yeah. yeah. So I just stayed at O line. Then they ended up moving me to tight end. Still thought I was gonna get the Taylor. No action. Still, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm gonna tell you who they had that running back. Nigga named Baby D. Keno brother. Man. I don't know if you know Keno brother. He's cold. He used to play running back. 
But this, you know, everybody from over that side, everybody from his side side was over here. You know, that's Backstreet, uh, wow. Lounge, Dance Street, all of them. So I'm coming from a couple apartments, man. Niggas ain't had no room for me over there. I had to make a way. And then I was playing up to weight classes because I was big. Yeah. So I'm playing with niggas, you know what I'm saying? Sixth, seventh grade. I'm in the fourth grade. Yeah. But all that, all that worked to my advantage, though, bro. Yeah. All of it worked to my advantage in the long run. Facts. All of it. it. Tight end, blocking, catching, lineman, blocking. Nose tackle. I played nose tackle on defense. Man. So, but just from learning every position, it gave me a respect for every position. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? But it also taught me how you got to have dog in you with this shit, bro. Because the same shit them linemen doing, the same shit the tight end doing, all of them. We all doing something we we need to do to make it work. You know what I'm saying? So, everybody do that shit together, it's going to hit, bro. But if everybody don't, one man fall off, it can just knock everybody out. So, it just taught me a little bit. It, was, it helped me respect the game a little bit more. Nah, facts. So, as you, you know, growing up, you playing ball, you get to middle school, you go to E.L. Smith. I go to McReynolds first. Oh, you go to McReynolds first? Okay, let me tell you why. I was going to E.L. Smith seventh grade. First day of school, some Mexican niggas tried to jump me for my J's. I don't know if you remember this. Uh, Smith had like a little, uh, they had like a little funeral home close by. Yeah, right. you got, yeah bro. I'm walking from Walking Square though. I mean, I'm walking from Wheeler Plaza to Smith. I'm walking from Wheeler Plaza by Mac Reynolds, yeah. you hear me, right? Yeah. To Smith. Walking, nigga, to school, every morning. So, look, man, first couple days was cool. As soon as I get up there, that nigga started jumping from my shoes. And we have a whole fight. Oh, man, say, hell now. Nah. I go to Mac Reynolds. Yeah. Then, eighth grade, he let, me he, he let me do it one more time. He gave me another shot. Yeah. And I ain't getting no fights, no nothing. Yo. So I, I ended up going to Smith eighth grade. Yeah, so uh, how was it playing ball there, man? Because, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a lot of ballers that came out of Smith. Why? Let me say this. I had no choice but to be great going to Smith because Smith and Wheeler, I'm going to be honest with you, because they had a nigga who I looked up to. You know what I'm saying? A nigga named Dalton Hughes. Say, man, this nigga was the Barry Sanders of Smith, man. Yeah. It ain't a nigga who went to Smith don't know Dalton. You know what I'm saying? But the thing about Dalton that fucked me up was how cold. He had 2,000 yards in high school, bro, for Wheatley. Yeah. For Wheatley, bro. Yeah. 2,000 yards, bro. And ain't nobody talk about that shit. Nobody. And he ended up going to TSU. That's what made me leave Wheatley. Yeah. 2000, bro. Yeah. In high school, bro. Yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, that's what made me leave Wheeler, man. Seeing him do all that, give his all, and then ain't shit happen for him. And then I think he ain't even get a scholarship. I don't know if he got a scholarship or not, but I know he ended up going to TSU. He paid a little bit there, but it was just like, I couldn't believe that shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, I ain't, I ain't pick nobody to admire pick niggas that I thought, you know what I'm saying, just because they was good in high school. Now, I pick niggas behind their character. I seen this nigga bust his ass every day. I seen him work hard. I seen him go without shit just so he could shine and take care of his family, his brothers and sisters. So that shit right there alone is what made me, you know what I'm saying? And then with the, how the way the nigga played, man, nigga gave his all, bro. He ain't get shit out that shit. Real shit. So that that woke me up. Uh, I said, oh yeah. I ain't gonna let that happen to me. I'm gonna I'm gonna get the fuck from up out this motherfucker. I'm gonna go somewhere where they gonna see me. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? I know it was trouble because basketball we really was known for basketball. basketball. It was a basketball school, state championship. Yeah. Most of you guys that left one division one or went to other Yes. Time. I know it was tough because it was like y'all, you know, the football players overlooked. Yeah, but I was, had a hell of a season. We had a hell of a season. Undefeated and, in the regular season? We was un undefeated, bro. Yeah. Like, never happened at Wheeler. We lost like two, we lost two uh, preseason games. Then we went on the road, running them bitches out. Ran through district, yeah. ran through every first time in the playoffs. Yeah. We played C. King, banging them. <laughs> banging them little, bro. Yeah. They end up, let me tell you how that be, bro. Motherfuckers trying to kick an extra point, fumble the ball. 
Run it in. <laughs> That's how we lost, cuz. That's how we lost. Them niggas was trying to kick a field goal, bro. Yeah. And pummel that bitch. That bitch fouled out. Us, yeah. we ain't used to being out there on no field goal team. Them niggas just fuck off the field. Man, nigga pick that ball up and run it in and score, and we lose. Yeah. Yes. And this is like the playoff game? And I know that hurt it. How far was y'all? That was our first time in the playoffs. We went undefeated. We ain't lost yet. So that was our first, first loss. Yes, first round. Man, I know it was a shocker for y'all. That shit happened. So, you know, after that happened, you know, the situation you told me about, you know, the homie. When that happened, yeah. basketball season was coming around. Shit, my best friend, Marsh, was like, you gotta get the fuck from up out of here, bro. Yeah. Like, this shit ain't. Look at what look look at what's going on with us. Yeah. Real shit. He took me and Tolliver, dude named Tolliver Preston, or my partner, mm -hmm. O'Lyman. Took me and him to Forest Brook. We went to their practice. Yeah. They was practicing, bro. We went over there, pulled up, get out the car. Coach, was like, man, what y'all doing up here? Shit, we trying to transfer. Okay. What's up? Y'all got y'all got a spot for us? He was like, him too. He was like, nah, that's our quarterback. He brought us over here. He was like, come Monday. Come Monday. I got you. Yeah. On me. Come Monday. Monday came around that bitch. I checked into the brook. Yeah. Next week, I was living in a whole apartment in Crofton. Me and my daddy. Fully furnished. Mm. My dad ain't had no J. My daddy was living at the little hoe house right there behind Chirps, nigga. You yeah. know what Chirps said? Yeah. You know the little hoe house right there. Yeah. That's my daddy was staying there, bro. <laughs> On me. So mm. from that moment, from end up, from living with my mom on the east side, coming back and forth to the world, my daddy staying over there because some shit had happened. Yeah. Now it's like, shit, I got the apartment now. You hear me? Yeah. Total different, total different view on life after that. Yeah. You mean to tell me I was gonna hustle all day, can't get nothing to pay, no bills, you might get some shoes or something to eat. But then just because I'm playing football, these people give a nigga a whole apartment? Yeah. It's like, like that shit might be, yeah. you know what I'm saying? I might be on or something, let me. Yeah. Man, I put the, I put the, I put the bullshit down. That was my last time, 10th grade was my last time. Being uh, what's the word? Hustling. It's my last time hustling. Tenth grade, I stopped. I was like, I'm gonna try this shit, see what I can get up out of it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I want to ask you, uh, cause I know, you know, a lot of rules have changed. Yeah. Like especially like when, when I was playing sports, you know, they had to you had to do some type of paperwork to get approved. Was that in it? Was that is any of that going on? Like when you was in high school, like you went to. Schools in another district. Let's say this. Man, those folks did not like that I went to Forest Brook, Jack. I got harassed. <laughs> I got stopped. Yeah. Nigga, I had to play JV basketball. I like, we came and tried to get me, like, kicked out. And they tried to have me sent back. Man. man, I had the police come to the apartment I got. I had the police come to the house probably about 16 times that one year. 16 home visits they came. So make sure that I live there. You feel me? Yeah. Daddy name on it. My daddy lived right here in Crofton. What you going to say? Yeah. But if you ask him about paperwork, that was the paperwork. Now you had to live. You had to show proof of residence. And then they came in there, looked through my clothes, looked through my drawers, everything, to make sure that I actually lived here, bro. For real, we was not. Them niggas wouldn't give it up like that, home. They wouldn't. Let me tell you when they quit. Forrest Brook ended up playing Texas City. My junior year, this is the first game. So I ain't played no football over there yet. Everybody's just speculating. You feel me? We played Texas City. Texas City just one state. The year before, right? Yeah. So they bringing back 15 starters from the state winning team. 15 starters. All these niggas going D1, bro. Yeah. I ain't talking about no. I'm talking about Oklahoma, Alabama, LSU. Like, they got niggas like that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. We go down there and walk them niggas down 21 to 0. 
What you mean? I had 270 some yards on 21 rushing. The only two touchdowns in the game. The other touchdown came from a block punt. I had all the yards and it was in the rain. We beat the ass. Yeah, the Finley State champion. Yeah. That was Forrest Brook first time kicking they ass. Ever. Ever. And I was the big dog. I'm talking about, man, I, I come back to the school. Yeah. Now, you would have thought it was a, a, a million man march or something out there, bitch, yeah. bro. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. With free barbecue and free look at it, yeah. Man, that shit was stupid. I ain't never experienced nothing like that in my life, cuz. I was like, oh, this shit different, different. Yeah. yeah. That shit was like life over there. It was what basketball was for Weeby. Yeah. Football was there at Forest Brook. And could you tell the people what position you played, the posi multiple positions you played at uh, Forest Brook? I played, well, at Forest Brook, I played, we called it an F back. Yeah. It ain't a full back, it ain't a tail back. It's yeah. an F back because we had a triple option. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I was the F back and I played linebacker and safety. Yeah, real shit. And what, what did you like more, offense or defense? I like the fucking touch guys, man. I, I like hitting on them. No, no, I'm going to say this. I like knocking the shit out of people, whether it's running them over, yeah. blocking them, whatever the case. But that thrill from a touchdown, bro, yeah. say, bro, bro, that thrill from when you get across the grass and all the niggas and try to stop you, and you just get the grab that bitch and throw it in the, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Fuck out of here, clown ass. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. on nothing, man. Man, that shit there, like, that's a piece of the pie right there, bro. On four. Yeah, because the, you know, the ones that score the touchdown, that's who get all the recognition. It do. Yeah. You do. But crossing that, man, that's a big, that's a big dude one time. Be like, bro, you ever score a touchdown? He'll be like, yeah, I picked up the phone, but man, when I crossed that line, it, it felt different. That shit, it's it's different. Like getting in that end zone with the ball in your hand, bro. If you ever touch it, that's why you niggas get addicted. Niggas <laughs> more play wide receiver, they want to score all type. Of, you know what I'm saying? Real talk, man. It's addictive, bro. Success is addictive. Success is a drug, bro. So it's like um in life, what I learned was this: as long as I never quit, I never lose. You feel me? But you got to also walk that shit. And what I mean by walking, any and everything you're going to do in life going to come with some turmoil and a little, a little trouble. Yeah. That shit is put there to see if you really want it or not, bro. Mm -hmm. That's the only difference. So the only difference between me and another nigga is I just don't quit. Yeah. I ain't going to quit. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Square man. So, you know, uh, you at Forest Brook with Johnny. How was that? Through man. A we um we actually and for those that don't know Jolly, Johnny Jolly was a former D tackle for mm -hmm. the Packers, the Green Bay Packers, man. Bro was nice. And and uh, uh Texas A and Maggie. Texas A and Maggie too, man. Shout out to Big Twelve. Well, it, they they SEC now, but A and yeah. Big Twelve back in the day. Yes, sir. So uh, boy, another funny story. Me and Jolly used to play against each other, hooping. Yeah. When we was young, you know, I was going to the park leads. That nigga was at T Wheel. I'm at Finnegan Park. You know, I did the park lead. We used to buy the squabble. Even in high school, me and this old squabble. <laughs> Every day. Yeah. We were squabbling, so we was them partners. Like, when it came to being complete, I was going to push him, he was going to push me. So, that shit, people like, how y'all homeboys y'all fighting? Nah, bitch, we make each other better. Yeah. But, you know what I'm saying? People didn't understand that shit back then. It wasn't like it is now. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But, um, Johnny was an upper class and he was before me, so Johnny walked out there. When he got the AM shit, I was going to AM. I was going to AM with him. My daddy put a <laughs> My daddy was like, nigga, you is not going to school in Texas. Your ass got to get the fuck away from here. And it ain't that he hated Texas, he just he wanted me to leave and go see something different, bro. You feel me? Like he wanted me to get out of my comfort zone, but this is what he told me. He said, you go to Colorado. He said, let me tell you this. Yeah, that shit different. Yeah, that shit hard. But if you make it, if you make it, nigga, you could make it anywhere. Yeah. Anywhere. Yeah. Which he was right, because it was a total opposite of where I came from. Yeah. I come from all black. I'm talking about, bro, I'm in all white. Yeah. I can see, I can see me from 
a million miles away walking across campus. You know what I'm saying? And then when I see me, it don't act shit like me. So it's like, you know how many people had to take speech classes, bro? Real talk. Yeah. I'm being all the way G with you. Everybody from Houston, that made everybody from Houston take speech classes. Because we came down there with that. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah, shit going down. You know what I'm saying? H time was handy. And then we was really talking like that in interviews. You know what I'm saying? Boys coming down. You remember that boys coming down? We're going to bang the boy. We're gonna, you know what I'm saying? We chopping shit. Yeah. That's how we talking in interviews on yeah. TV, bro. Like, Whoa. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, we giving up the sauce. They went and got them niggas out the trap. Yeah, y'all did. Y'all did. That's all good. Yeah. yeah, but we mastered that shit, though, bro. And yeah. I say us being there all together, man, and then dealing with the R's in a racist motherfucking place, a hell of a university. Yeah. Hell of a university. But the place was racist. Not everybody. You know, but some. But we needed that, too, because that shit joined us all together, man, even closer. I'm telling you, bro, the people you go to college with, them four years, man, could be more than what you did with a nigga from elementary all the way to high school. It's just different, bro. It's different. For sure. So I know you uh you spoke on Colorado. Yeah. You got to talk about so senior year in high school. Right? Okay. Like what led you going to Colorado, offers that was given to you, uh, campus visits and all that. So, you know, your, soft, your freshman, sophomore, junior, all that. You know what I'm saying? Your senior, you went crazy. I went stupid. Yeah, 16, over 1,600 rushing yards. Yes, sir. 20-something touchdowns. I'll try to tell you. I remember it. Sure. <coughs> mm-hmm. Shit. He was a <coughs> there. Yes, sir. MVP two years in a row. Ranked you as the number 11 fullback in the nation. Yes, sir. First team All-State, first team all no fours league. Yes, sir. And you earned offensive MVP of your district. You know what I'm saying? Two years in a row. Two years in a row. 11 and 12. Both years at the brook. But you had one situation. I ain't going to say one situation. It was one game that hurt y'all because y'all lost in the sem state semifinals. Yes, bro. And who was that, too? That was Bay City, bro. I'll never forget that. Bay City. About three points. 47 to 50, bro. Ooh. 47 to 50. Did you have fun in that game even though you lost up? Cause it, it was a it high It was. Score. I know it was intense, but it was a high score. I'm going to tell you why. Forever, it would be one of my best games, and even with the loss, I still take it. Bro, we was down 28-0 to zero in the first quarter. Got to the game late. Bus came late. Everything was fucked up from the beginning. We get to the game, and we got seven minutes to get ready and get on the field. And by the time my fans get there, it's at the end of the first. I'm talking about zero everybody. Zero people at the game. You hit me on our side. They shit full. But then that first quarter came. That whole mother, look here. You would have thought, it's, you know how a dark cloud come over and it look real dark in the spot, and then the sun come back? Man, it looked like that's what happened. And then that bitch was full. Everybody in the gang like this. What the fuck wrong with these niggas? 28 to 0, bro, at the end of the first quarter. We walked them niggas down. Damn. I had 220 yards receiving. I had 250 yards rushing. I had two touchdowns rushing, two touchdowns receiving. I had, what, a pick. I had three sacks. I knocked the quarterback out the game. I didn't come out the field. I stayed in the game the whole game. Then didn't come out the field because I was up. I was like, man, I don't give a fuck what nobody said. We ran our own plays. I said, man, we down 20-0. Everybody saying, fuck us. Turn up. Like, what we going to do? Suck our motherfucker tell us we're going to turn up on these people. Man, we turned the fuck up. And the crazy thing about it is, I don't give a damn what game anybody talk about it. They bring up the loss because it was so fucking good. You know what I'm saying? Like, we lost. But man, that shit was, man, it was some shit to see, bro. Yeah. Real shit, it was some shit to see, bro. Hey. So, you lose in the state semifinal. Yep. It's basically recruiting season. Like, you getting ready to, did you already commit? But, like, why you? I committed, committed to LSU. Oh, you committed to LSU? Yeah, I committed to LSU. I was going to LSU to 10th grade. Nick Saban came to the book. As soon as I got to the book, Nick Saban came to one of our uh, practices. We was called Fifth Head Football. He came there. Uh, Him, Coach Haywood, a couple other dudes, running back coach named Coach Haywood. <coughs> they come to that practice. <coughs> I see him. 
<clears throat> I'm trying to run through everybody. Coach, call me in that bitch when we come in. I want to meet somebody. So how you doing, sir? So I know who you is, you Nick Saban. He said, damn, you ain't even let me talk. I said, man, I, man, look, you ain't got to say nothing to me. I know everything. Yeah. I know it. What you mean? I see you all the time. Yeah, yeah man, I've been dreaming about coming there, motherfucker, since I was a kid. There ain't nothing you can, like, I, I've been waiting yeah. for this moment. <laughs> to be honest, because I said, boy, shut up and let the man talk. Sorry, right, I'm sorry, sir. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I said, I'm sorry, sir. He's like, man, I like him. He got say he like that every day. So yeah, man, shit. What you mean? I love this. Yeah. Nigga offered me a scholarship right there. The right man. there. Yeah. Probably my second, my second week at the brook. I got my scholarship off from LSU. So I was like, fuck everybody else. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Then end up going down there, fucking with some people. And this is why I say. Everybody don't be happy for your success. It was a nigga that would rather get himself in trouble to cock box me so I don't go there. A nigga on a trip talking about people was giving us stuff and all this talk and, and put my name in the shit. Talking about, well, I was his roommate. We all received and that I, I received a motherfucking thing. I don't know what he talking about. You feel me? So he kind of shook the spot up a little bit. So when he shook the spot up, it made not LSU stopped recruiting me, no, because they kept like they kept doing their thing, but they start having investigators start coming to my house and yeah. just doing too much, you know. At that time, and we young, yeah. huh? I'm hitting huh? You dumb like dumb, huh? Oh, you know what I'm saying? We don't talk. We don't talk to people like that. Yeah. I'm young guy already, you know. And then speaking to somebody or even being in a situation where somebody said some other shit, you just man, I don't know nothing. You feel me? So with that, it opened up doors again. That's how Texas, Texas A&M, um, I had Texas, Texas A&M, <clears throat> Texas, Missouri was on me hot, Florida State was on me hot. These are the people that offer scholarships that uh, I, I went to go visit. Colorado, hold on, Colorado was first trip, Missouri was a trip, Florida State was a trip, A&M was a trip. And I went Arizona. Arizona. Um, they had a dude named he went to um he went to Booger T. I think his name was Harold something. I can't remember. Nigga was cold running back. He ended up going to Arizona. So I was like, shit, I you know somebody from the city I might jump. But then was all the places I went. And say, man, if you ever man, name a college movie you didn't see. That's that your favorite college movie with football in it. Program. That's what the fuck you better have said there. That's what that shit was like. Yeah. Each one of them places. Like the program, bro. Somebody I got six. I probably got about six people hosting me. Yeah. I got a whole fucking suite to myself. Probably had a jacuzzi and one of my man. Stupid shit. Yeah. Like, man, dinners, man, going, man, look. I would say that that shit was the closest thing I had to going to the lead at that moment. I was like, shit, if they're going to do it like this, yeah. shit, man, what you think the lead going to do? You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. for real. But being successful early in high school, being humble, um, one of my coaches, um, Coach Steven Thompson, told me that. And um, one of my basketball coaches, Coach McCoy, he said it from Smith. Oh, you, oh, you remember Coach McCoy from Smith? Basketball coach, not neither. <laughs> That's how he talk. You don't know Coach McCoy? Oh, man, say. Liz and did basketball coach at Smith. Um, Liz said, as long as you got to humble yourself, son. If you ever want to get some, son, you got to humble yourself, son. So that shit just stuck with me forever. So a lot of times I make myself be small so everybody else can be big. But it always paid out for me. You know what I'm saying? And what I mean by being smart, I mean like just not acting like I'm bigger than the situation regardless of who I'm talking to. Yeah. Every man equal. Every man is a man. Whether you got paper, whether you don't, that don't make you no man. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So when I looked at it like that, it helped me take some of the all this fabricated shit people drop on people and just look at a motherfucker for who they really is. Yeah. And that way I can move how I need to move. And even if they're a hoe, I fuck with whole ass people too. I fuck with them too, but I know how I know how to deal with them. 
And as long as you honest about who you is, I don't give a fuck, because who can I judge? You know what I'm saying? I'm unjudgmental. So I ain't judge, but just don't judge me. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? So how did you uh, get to Colorado? Like, what made you decide, like, damn, I'm going to go to Colorado and go fuck with Coach Barnett? I'm going to tell you why. It's an older dude. Uh, and I ain't talking about him yet for a reason. He went to Smith. He went to Wheeling. He went to Colorado. He went to the NFL. Nigga named Canavis McGee. Mm. One of the first niggas out the ward. I'm talking about. Nigga was my coach at Wheeling. He was a, he was a linebacker coach, but he was my coach at Wheeling. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I went to Smith. I went to Wheeling. I took his whole fucking path. Every step he took, I took it because I knew he was a nigga that went somewhere. So when it came down to college, he called me. Man. He was at Madison with VY down. You know what I'm saying? He was up there coaching them. He said, hey, he said, hey, what are you thinking about doing? I told him, woo, woo, woo. he said, hey, all that's good. But if you go here, you're going to be good. He looked at me in my eyes. Grab my hand and say, You're gonna be good. Squeeze that motherfucker, you hear me? I, man, I pull that bitch back. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Shit. I gone on by my business. We was blessed. Yeah. We was blessed. I said, Okay. And when he said that, them motherfuckers never stopped coming. I'm talking about, they was at my school every week, at every basketball game. You know what I'm talking about? Fuck that. I met a and on my recruiting trip. Ring, ring. Hold on, I'm real shit. Yeah. On my daddy. My daddy been gone 11 years. I'm just coming from a party. Man. It's about 4 or 5 in the morning. Yeah. Ring, I'm fuck out of my hotel. Hello? Lawrence Vegas, what the fuck you doing down there in Texas saying, them motherfucker? This is Coach Wilson, Colorado motherfucker. I, <laughs> Hold that bitch up. What? I got my motherfucking ass from out of Texas and them. I'm like, yeah. I called John. I said, man, but you gotta go, bro. Yeah. We gotta go, bro. I gotta go back to the house, bro. These, yeah. these folks didn't call me. You hear me? Because yeah. Johnny was my recruit. Uh, he was my hostess on my trip to AM. Yeah. Because I they already knew if they sent Johnny, yeah. I probably was coming. You know what I'm saying? So they sent his ass. I was, man, look, I was from the tail, I was from the tail, Colorado. Shit. I didn't call my phone that hotel scared shit out of me. I got back to school Monday morning, bro. I walked my coach. They call me. This, this is how crazy the school is. My mother was calling me over the loudspeaker. <laughs> Lawrence Vickers, the coach, the coach office. Lawrence Vickers, the coach homes office. Lawrence Vickers, the coach homes office. They did that shit three times. Act like I ain't hear that shit. Yeah. Five minutes later. Lawrence Niggas, the coach homes office. Lord, the coach homes office right now, ASAP. Yeah. I'm like, God damn. Yeah. I already know who it is. Nigga, it's my recruiting coordinator, Coach Wilson. It's my running back coach, yeah. Coach Eric, uh, Eric B. Enemy, and the fucking head coach, Gary Barnett. All in. The man that all, the Chiefs? That's cool. that, that was the fifth coordinator for the Chiefs? Eric B. Enemy was my running back coach at Colorado. Oh, shit. Yes. The one that coached the Chiefs, the one that with the Vikings. Yeah. The nigga, he came and got me. Man. He couldn't recruit me because he Houston wasn't his area. Yeah. That was Coach Wilson area. But he had Coach Wilson come hunt me down through Canavis McGee, all them frat brothers. Yeah. All them with the Colorado together. Canavis McGee, uh, uh, it's like four niggas. Off, uh, Arthur, Big Arthur, hold on, a Super Bowl champion, Alfred Williams. Yeah. All these niggas from Houston. They went down to Colorado together. They, they just call that stuff like 4-H time boys or something. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And fucking uh, uh, Eric Ben me. All them niggas went to school together, man. So that's how Coach Coach McGee was like, nigga, you need to go there. They had already been putting, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Plotting on me. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They put that play together. I'm going to be shit. I ain't mad at them. It was a good play. It was a good play. It was a good play. They ran a good play on me. They ran a good play on me. Hell of a recruit for sure. Yeah, bro. The story hard. is a hell of a story, bro. Yeah. And for them going that hard for you, they just made you. It made me be like I ain't letting nobody down, bro. Like, 
Man, you step in that water for me, man, you got me fucked up. I'm crossing whatever bridge. Yeah. You feel me? Because they opened up a floodgate for my family for forever, dude. There ain't nothing I could do to ever repay that shit, bro. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Of course, I did the work. But yeah, what's work with that, man? It take work. It take knowing a motherfucker. It take a motherfucker who can vouch for you that's official. Yeah. That shit means something. Yeah. So when you first get to Colorado, yeah. I know it's a lot of things you got to do. You got to get used to it. Like the, the college athlete uh, schedule. You know what I'm saying? From waking up with like at 4 something in the morning. 5 o'clock, bro. We had, the, we had breakfast club. Yeah. Freshman. 5 o'clock in the morning. But the fucked up thing about us is, it was every morning, even when it snowed, man. So my snow be up here, man. Yeah. We trucking through that shit, trying to get to school, you hear me? Mm -hmm. I'm got forces on. Yeah. I got forces on. I ain't got no more about the Tims. I don't know nothing about that shit. Then I'm out there in my forces. Bitch, it's slushy, mm -hmm. ugly looking, you hear me? Yeah. I'm talking about that. I filed three times on campus. We got me some Tims next day. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like just yeah. that, uh, you know, us, we we have a start uh and hell no, we gotta come with that mink shit, that North Face. Yeah, yeah that's what I learned about North Face. I learned about North Face 2002. You hear me? Yeah, before he came down south, yeah. I've been on North Face since 2002, Holmes. That's when I went to Colorado, bro. That's when I graduated high school. That's all I seen out there. Oh, what the fuck is this? I thought it was a Target brand. Man, that shit hit, man, pff, shit about six, seven hundred dollars, man. Yeah. I'm talking about, shit was more than starter. You feel me? Mm -hmm. But just did. Hold on. No, no Popeyes. Mm. I'm, man, no Popeyes, bro. <laughs> <laughs> you hear me? Yeah. No Bluebell. Bluebell gone. I can't, I ain't had Bluebell since goddamn 2002. They took me, but I ain't had no Popeyes. You know, I'm, this is my first time ever seeing Chick-fil-A, 2002. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? That shit was down there, but yeah. All we had was water burger. I mean, uh, not, no, no water burger. Yeah, yeah. Jack in the Box, Subway, fucking Wendy's. Yeah. Cool. Culture shot. Culture? <laughs> Ain't no fuckers ain't putting no season on they food. You hear me? I ain't had no slap your mama. No, I'm talking about nigga. Boy, I'm salt and pepper king. I, bitch, I, I used to keep salt and pepper in my backpack, cuz. What? I kept salt and pepper in house house in my backpack, bro. I was making my mama send it. Yeah. Eating this old dry ass food. Kid, I'm talking about. I know mama used to be laughing. What? Was going on. Man, shit. I started, we started, when I got my crib, we started cooking. Shit, me and my partner Ewo, my dude Brian Ewo, man, we both knew how to cook. Shit, man, nigga, we used to have meals. I'm talking about red beans, rice, chicken, gravy, you know what I'm saying? Meatloaf, you know what I'm saying? Steak. We cooking, nigga. Yeah. Not every day, but when we cook. Yeah, so your freshman year, uh, you got playing time. No red shirt, right? Just straight, straight to it. They had a jumbo package. We had this dude named Brandon Drum. Number one forward back in college. I learned a lot from that dude. I appreciate him for even sharing the field with me, man, because he ain't had to do that. And most niggas don't do that. He kept it G. He kept the tradition going. He showed me how to com compete. How he was going to compete with me, but he was going to teach me. He was the first person told me, sh showed me how to do that. Yes, sir. He showed me how to practice hard, push other motherfuckers in. You know what I'm saying? Whatever I'm expecting to give, they got to expect to get the same motherfucking thing. He just told me how to be a leader on a whole nother level with grown men because you got to realize I was still a teenager. These dudes grown men right now. You know what I'm saying? These dudes grown men. So shout out to Brandon Drum, man. That was my OG fullback. But they had a package for me, bro, called Jumbo. Mm -hmm. And shit, I was on our special team, so I was in that water. Yeah. Freshman year. But they was preparing me because shit, I was getting the torch the next three years. Yeah. I carried that motherfucker. Uh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? End up being in Colorado, man. The motherfuckers end up changing my whole position, bro. I wasn't no fullback. I wasn't no tailback. I'm the only nigga that ever had his own position called V-back. Yeah. <laughs> bro, they did this. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because of the versatility, bro. Meaning, like, yeah. I was going to do everything, bro. Black, run, catch. My yeah. senior year, bro, I had 15 touchdowns, bro. I was number one rusher in college in Goal line touchdown, 15, bro. 15, walking niggas in from a 20. 
Yeah, yeah bro. And it's crazy because your last year. I went stupid. Yeah. You Again, ran, just like. You ran nine touchdowns. Mm-mm. And you caught two. Not my saying you. Not in 05? Uh-uh. I had 15. 15. Rushing touchdowns. I had four in one game. Man. Yeah, four against Missouri. Man. Brad Smith, remember him? Yeah. Four against them. Yeah. In Colorado. I think I had like 18 rushes for like 85 yards, four touchdowns. Cooking. Man. Shit. Uh, against a and both times I had two tubs. One rushing, one passing. You know what I'm saying? Like, man, look, I, I got juicy that year. I got juicy my same year. How was the rivalry with Colorado and Colorado State, man? Because you uh, see one play, you made it personal when you got in. No, that, that, that's how I, that's the rivalry. Yeah. Oh, uh, man, we used to go down there to them niggas' school. We used to go down there to their school the whole year. Like, okay, it's like this. Wheelie cash, man. Mm. Wheelie cash, man. But it's in state. Yeah. Wheelie cash, man, both fifth ward. You know what I'm saying? So that's the battle of Colorado. And, man, the shit, the shit even tougher than the Nebraska game because Nebraska is really our, yeah. you know what I'm saying? That's our rivalry game. Colorado, Nebraska, we fighting. Yeah. Fans fighting. Yeah. <laughs> CSU is the battle of the big dog of the state. Yeah. Yeah. You're Colorado State. You're not a big dog. <laughs> Period, bro. Yeah. Like, Come on, man. You the state school, man. <laughs> no disrespect, but come on, man. <laughs> Niggas, they weren't fucking with us, bro. Yeah. They weren't fucking with us. But if you were talking to one of them, they're going to have the same attitude because that was just, it was like it's embedded in you, bro. It's embedded in you. But I still, you know, I still fuck with all of them. But yeah. when it comes to football, fuck them. Like, so, what was going through your mind? And that, and that one play when you got in the end zone and you, like, push, throw down. I'm going to tell you. Yeah. Um, they had been talking shit that year. Yeah. So I had told them that we was going to do king of the hill and we the kings at the hill. Mm -hmm. And we knocking their ass down. Right? Mm -hmm. But that same guy that I knocked, he had had a pick already. He he was like they, they number one counter. 6'2", yeah. you know what I'm saying, 205. He wasn't no little nigga. Yeah. But he wasn't. He wasn't, he wasn't me. Yeah, that's big for a corner. Yeah, yeah. At, I'm talking about at that time. You know what I'm saying? So he was a big dog. Yeah. I'm talking about, oh, he pick our wide receiver up and slam him. I'm talking about one of these, scoop him. Mm. Boom. He quit running all down the sideline. Yeah, all that. You know what I'm saying? Ooh. So this be, it's fourth and one. It's fourth and one, bro. Coach had been playing in the way. I'm telling nigga, man, fuck all that, man. Give me the box. You can see the play. If you look at the whole play, I'm like this. Give me the motherfucking ball. Give me the motherfucking ball, man. Fuck that shit. Hmm. Go ahead. Bet. Call that shit, Claire. Come on. Power. They know the play was 90. 95 power. 95 power. As soon as the fullback and the lineman pull, go this way. Boom. There ain't nothing but one person. It's going to be one or two people. You'll see the linebacker. The linebacker's supposed to come. He tried to come underneath to come get me. I bounced right out. Boom. So he out the picture. Now it's one on one, me and the safety. You feel me? Even with that, I could have just ran to the side, let him this. I was like, oh, bitch, you was turning up. Oh, you thought you was that nigga on the sideline running out on our sideline. Woo, woo, woo. I said, I'm about to dog this hoe. You know what I'm saying? But back then, we used to kind of make him dog with his boots on. I was like, I'm killing niggas with their boots on. You know what I'm saying? Man, all I seen was him. I seen he took the bait. And he wasn't finna, he wasn't finna hit the knees. I said, oh yeah, oh, oh yeah, oh yeah, this bitch done. He done. He done. Because all of them used to be like this. And then they drop. Boom. You know what I'm saying? Well, try to, you know, I mean, I'm going to get that little shit up out of here. Or either I'm going to hit you first. Say, so, man, that boy, that boy said he wanted to test it, bro. So I let him test it. I let him test it. Test the waters. And when I hit that nigga, you can see it. I was coming. I really wanted to punch that motherfucker. I boom, and when I seen him go down, I, I was like, this nigga is light. Ugh. Just wrong oh, that nigga, man. I, I'm talking about slow walk that nigga like that. You hear me? Man, slow walk that nigga, man. That shit like, I, 
the shit ain't in slow motion, but I just felt slow motion. But that shit was going so slow. Real talk. Man. And when you was doing what you was doing, man, at Colorado, I know that you used to feed off the fans' energy, man. All day. Just thousands of people screaming, chanting. I know you got it in the from me. They used to call me um, Hollywood. <laughs> they used to call me Hollywood and say, wow, this back in the... <clears throat> I think this was, uh, I remember Gucci Shades was just popping hard, the big black bitch, you know what I'm saying? That's where them hoes on campus. But on the Jumbotron, you know, like they always show the players and shit whenever you coming out or whatever. Back then, I was doing a Tony Yeah Yeah on niggas. I was hitting them with that. I was, you know what I'm saying? Can't feel my face on niggas. You feel me? So they thought it was like some Hollywood shit. Right? So it's like, oh, Hollywood. Oh, Hollywood. We love you. Man, my name no motherfucking Hollywood. That's Tony Yayo. What the fuck is wrong with y'all? But uh, shit, let them run with that shit. Fuck it. Go ahead. It's good. Hollywood it is then. Yeah. <laughs> Real talk. But I know, man, you just, the memories is there forever, man. Man, them hoes don't, man, let me tell you this. Um, the, the only thing you could ever do in life that's going to be worth something is make great memories, bro, because that's the only thing you can keep. That's the only thing you keep with you, bro. That's the only thing you keep with you. That's the only thing you can take. We can't take nothing but the memories, bro. So create great memories, bro. That would be my, you know what I'm saying? My game to anybody. Create great memories, great moments. I just keep trying to exceed that shit. And um, like I had seen on the interview with you and um, a man from Colorado, which is true, it seemed like in college, that college fun is it's like a lifetime fun. It is, bro. Yeah. It um, what you what you get in four years of college surpasses first to twelfth grade. Yeah. Those four years and the experience and the transition into the person you're becoming. And you got to realize, this is a person you spend every day with, blood, sweat, and tear. High school, I went with them niggas every day like that. You know what I'm saying? We be at practice at school, but then we still had other friends doing other shit. I'm really with these people every single day for four day, four years straight. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And then all the turmoil I'm going through, they going right through it with me. So that bond right like, there can't be broken, period. You know what I'm saying? And then to see where people come from and to see how we all succeed and what our dreams and aspirations was and to see how we went attacked it or to see the ones that didn't and you just be like, man, you my brother. Like, it'd be like some real blood shit, bro. It's like college was everything my dad told me it was going to be. It was the experience that I would never take for granted and it molded me into the dude I am today because without college, I wouldn't experience what real maturity and growth was. Because when I went to Colorado, it wasn't no, oh, here go the hood. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't no crab in the bucket mentality. Motherfuckers used to be like, why are you so angry about somebody just saying some words to you? <laughs> They're just words, you know? So, but in the hood, you'll get, man, that whole nigga talk to you like that. Man, it'll be the nigga. So that, that right there was, I was able to be like, that shit make a lot of sense. When me, I'm a listener. So it ain't that I'm taking what you're saying. If you create logic and understanding for something that I can understand, I can no longer say I don't understand it anymore. Or I can't see what you're saying. So just like even with dealing with racism, I told myself, if we act like they did, we would rule the world. If we had the type of pride that they had about being white, if we did that, we would rule the world. You feel me? Yeah. So it made me dream like that. It made me be like, I ain't going to be ignorant to the fact. I ain't going to let what hood shit or uh, that clown shit get in the way of me maturing and be a real man. I ain't going to do that because it's I wouldn't be here if it wasn't something here for me to take from this shit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Every situation, you're supposed to take something from it, bro. What the fuck? You just giving shit away free? You know what I'm saying? Taking something from it. Taking in, learning. Especially if, if it's something you're experiencing. You know what I'm saying? So, shit, I wanted to grow and mature, bro. I just didn't want to be no hood nigga, bro. I didn't want to be that. I wanted to be a grown-ass man, bro. 
Yeah. And do you think like the science, like like the environment you were in, the new environment, and then your major kind of made you look at things differently? Like For sure. Yes. Yeah. But but that's why. Because I was already experiencing it on the inside. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, I might as well study this shit just to get a look because I'm already interested in it. And then it made me be able to study people. That's why I can learn people. I don't have to listen to nobody talk us nothing. If I be around you for a little bit, I'ma know you. Cause I'ma pay attention. I'ma watch what you do. And I'm say, okay, well, why he do that? Or why she do that? You know what I'm saying? Just being observant. If you observe it, just sit back, man. People will tell you everything you want to know. We don't hide anything. People think we hide. Our emotions come out in some type of way, in some form or fashion. But we just can't see it because we the ones doing it. And ask yourself, how many times do you ever really listen to yourself talk? I listen to myself talk. Because I want to, when I'm talking and if it come out wrong, I can stop myself right then and there and say, hey, no, 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 I don't mean like that. This is what I'm saying. You feel me? So it was all that shit that I learned. It helped me become and mature into the person that I am. And I had anxiety bad, so I needed that social. You feel me? And I, I suffered from anxiety real bad. At that time, I was having panic attacks like motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? So I wanted to stop that shit. So I was trying to do any and everything I could just to keep me calm or just to learn how to deal with people, bro. Because growing up in who we had to deal with shit like that. And damn show. Sure, my response to somebody doing some sucker shit was to beat your motherfucking ass. Well, you can't do that shit when you go there. You know what I'm saying? You got to switch that shit up. It ain't the same response. And people playing different. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, there you go. Yeah. So, you know, you finished the rest of your years in Colorado. Um, you got invited to go to the Senior Bowl. Yeah. Did you participate in the Senior Bowl? Yes, sir. Bowl? And how, how was their experience? Man, when I got to that Senior Bowl, yeah, so okay, so I'm like, I've been playing against all the cold dudes in college, yeah. but now this is everybody. This is all the coldest ones. Mm -hmm. And I kill? I say, oh, it's up. That's yeah. The senior bowl for me was a test to see how I was coming on some real shit. It was a hard test because I was the only fullback. Yeah. So, I mean, I went every snap. Every snap. Yeah. You got to think about it. They got five running backs. They got damn near 10 wide receivers. You know what I'm saying? Four tight ends. Everybody get a break but, but me. Yeah. One fullback. Yeah. Well, I went down there and held my nuts on them folks. You hear me? Yeah. Showed up, showed up. Shit. Caught the ball, ran that bitch. Well, I think I had a couple of receptions. I had a couple of runs in the, in the senior bowl. Shit. Showed out at practice. Spoke good. I, I spoke about, you know what I'm saying, even my my thoughts because I had got put in jail when I was in college. I spoke about that clearly to where they could understand because a lot of people was, how did you go to jail for seven days? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Had to explain that. Man, it was awesome. It was awesome. Awesome experience, bro. Did, were you uh, able to experience winning like a Big Tour championship? Did you have yeah, I won a Big Tour in one time. Man. Yeah, one time. I went to that bitch three times. Man. I went to the Big Tour championship three times in four years, bro. <laughs> three times, bro. Yeah. Came home and played. One time we got embarrassed, bro. We played Texas, man. People, I don't stepped on our ass. That shit was ugly. Oh, that was ugly. That was a relying too, cuz. In the hometown, in the age, man. But with homies and family members, probably just. Man, them niggas put up man. 70 on us, cuz. I don't even want to talk about them niggas put 70 up on us. On live TV. Okay. I was so hard. I bought some. <laughs> yeah. I want to fight everybody. You know, nigga put basketball dumb up on us, bro. Hell, man. Tripping. Speaking of basketball, man, they said you had a game. Man, what you mean they said I had, man? This shit is in me, man. <laughs> yeah, man, I cook, man. Um, I think a lot of people look at me and they don't see basketball because I was big and husky and I'm physical, but that was my first sport before baseball. Basketball was everything. That's how we played. Yeah. I hooped in high school. Shit, I was on Boston at Ed Wheaton in the ninth grade. So, you know what I'm saying? Like, a lot of niggas can't tell you that yeah. they play football. 
I played football as a freshman, was on varsity. I played freshman basketball, and I came up in the playoffs to play varsity. A lot of niggas can't tell you they did that. I'm talking with Coach Carr. Jackie Carr? Yeah. You hear me? Most state championship. That press, that press gonna keep me in shape. I'm talking about. They used to call me X Man. They used to say I used to be out there like I'm on the X, like 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 I'm on the tab or something, cause I was so energetic. You know what I'm saying? And I brought that football mentality to the basketball. So when I did that, I it was fucking them up. You know what I'm saying? The basketball niggas ain't want none of that. Man, they ain't want that smoke, right? Yeah. They ain't want that. I'd be mad. I come up, man. I get ready to go hold one of them niggas. Niggas like, man, come on, yeah, 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 baby, yeah, yeah. I, I'm, I got five of them hoes. I'ma use them. I'ma use them bitches. I'ma use them. You hear me? I'ma use every last one of them bitches. I ain't letting the game go without using all them hoes. Somebody gonna get their work. Yeah, man. man. So no six, man. NFL draft, using the six, you draft the sixth round by yeah. the Cleveland Browns. Yes, sir. What's going through your mind when you got that call that you was the Cleveland Browns? Man, I was in the house. I was mad because I thought I was going the first day. I thought I was going to go like third, fourth round. Yeah. That's what Asian was anticipating, the scouts was anticipating. So I'm like, all right, I'm going to go third, fourth round. I ain't tripping. Didn't happen. Now I'm a little hot. You know what I'm saying? We just had two days back then. First four rounds, then the next four rounds. You know what I'm saying? I'm in the highs, laying down, bro. My energy is on zero. I see a foreign number come across my shit. Ring, ring. Ring, ring. I don't answer that motherfucker. Hey, call back. Next here, you know what I'm saying? I'm chirping. Yeah. What the fuck is this? I pick it up. Hello? Lawrence Vickers? So, yeah, this is me. Say, hey, this is uh, Romeo Cornell, man. How would you like to be a Cleveland Brown? I said, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> he said, no, I can't get the fuck out of here, but how would you like to be? Well, I said, fucking right. You fucking right. Yeah. Bro, while I'm talking to this man, I guess it's already on a it's out red on the TV. Yeah. But I'm talking to him. Yeah. I don't know this. Nigga, my phone got the <laughs> brain, brain. I'm telling you, I couldn't even. You hear me? Yeah. Motherfuckers come beating on the door. Boom, boom, boom. I was like, man, I'm all way in the Southwest. I had a spot out there because I just came back from college. I was training out here at Velocity. I had a spot out there. Brain, brain, man. My dad, now, brain, yeah, boy, goddamn it. Ooh, brain, yeah. You hear me? Yeah. I, I'm flying to the ward. Flying. Nigga, I get over there. Uh, they had a whole block party and everything for me, bro. Up there at the studio. You remember uh, Fifth World Boys that studio right up there by Lions? Yeah. Yo, they had a whole block party out there, bitch. Man, probably about, man, probably about five, six thousand people out there, bro. That bitch was stupid. Ooh. Yeah, man. Man, that's how they salute me. Guess what? Everybody from the block party, yeah. I took their ass out. I paid $4,000 for them, you know, 100, 200 people to enter the club Damn. that night. And we took over the whole motherfucking club from the block party to the club. On me! <laughs> On me, bro. Yeah. It was up. And, and how did it feel, man? Because I, I know you said, like, your pops basically was on you. How did it feel to see your pops just happy proud, man? Nigga, I ain't never seen my daddy cry. I ain't never seen my daddy cry. When I pulled up on him and I hugged him, I felt the nigga heart first, you know what I'm saying? Cause I was just that close on him. And the nigga tears start dropping like dying on me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I was like, I know this nigga not crying. <laughs> Man, I seen that nigga cry. Nigga, I turned into a, a third grader, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> Snot boogers, everything. Oh, no, you know what I'm saying? We had that moment, bro, where we both just let let our whatever out and just was like, nigga, we was proud. You know what I'm saying? So, man, like I tell my sons any day, man, it ain't, I don't owe nobody shit in this world. Nigga, I made my mom and my daddy proud. You hear me? Yeah. And if we could keep that type of mentality, that's what my kids, that's what I want my kids to have a mentality of. 
You know what I'm saying? I make y'all proud. I'm going to be great in the world because your parents is going to be the most purest people in this world. They're the ones that just want you to win without nothing from you. I don't get shit for you winning, bitch. I want you to win because that's what you want. You know what I'm saying? So, to make them proud, which is the hardest critics, still, come on, man. Yeah, man. Why would I give a damn about a nigga who don't even know me with his feelings versus somebody that done been here all day and I done got on their motherfucking nerves for damn near 18, 19 years? Yeah, yeah I care about that motherfucking opinion over another nigga. Yeah. You know what I mean? Hey. Yeah, man. So, 06 season, you know, um, you were behind another fullback, right? Terrell Smith. Yeah, but you, he took that. Did he bet you or was he on? He vetted me. Yeah. I mean, he was a great vet. Yeah. He knew I was coming. When I got there, he was like, yeah, they trying to get you to get me out of here, young nigga. <laughs> he told me that. Yeah. But he see I had that shit with me. Yeah. I had everything, but I had to learn some shit. And he taught me some, he taught me some grown man shit, cause he was a grown ass man, man. Yeah. T. Smith was a grown man, man. He was a grown man, bro. And he taught me some shit, but at the same time, you know, I came in there with that. Y'all got me fucked up. I'm getting on this grass. But it was respect, cause he tell me what to do, shit, I do it. I just exceed his expectations. It wasn't no. He ain't have to tell me my plays. He ain't have to do no shit like that. I was on all that. Yeah. Nigga, I'm still grown, nigga. But, yeah. but um, yeah, man. 12 Smith, man, uh, an excellent OG. Yeah. Taught me a lot of shit. Taught me how to keep my head down and keep going. Mm -hmm. And shit, he told me one day there's going to be a nigga coming there doing exactly what I'm doing. Yes. And he ain't lying. And I had to. I had to game me a young nigga. Game on me, give him out of the game. But shit, it was, it's, it's easy to reciprocate it when you've been through it easy. You know what I'm saying? Nah, no, Yeah. And, you know, y'all had like a, a a bad season, but that next season, I won 10 games, 10 6, but y'all still won eight. Didn't make the playoffs. Play but y'all was in a tough ass division. Yes. Because you had Baltimore. Two times a year. Yeah. Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh, Cincinnati. Cincinnati. Two times a year. Yeah. And all of them niggas was gone. Yeah. All three of them niggas was in the Super Bowl. Yeah. Pittsburgh, BMO, yeah. and Cincinnati was touching the Super Bowl within them years, bro. Yeah. We talking about Ocho. We talking about Troy Pollard, Malu, yeah. Ike, yeah. Taylor. You hear me? Yeah. We talking about yeah. Sims. We talking about goddamn me, James Harrison. Yeah. You hear me? You want me to keep going? Shit, Shit man. We, man. I didn't even go to Baltimore. Yeah. <laughs> Them niggas, Ed Reed. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Lou. You know what I'm talking about? Nada. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Seth, man. Come on, man. Yeah. I'm talking about dogs, bro. Man. Yeah, man. That shit was. And it's outside in the trenches. Yeah. Niggas get to play that pretty ball in them stadiums. That shit was all outside in the trenches. Snow games. I'm talking about with the element. That shit play a big part. Yeah. yeah. How was that season though? That 07 season, because you know, um, y'all had Jamal Lewis, who was one of the best power backs ever. ever played a game, man. Bro, that's how my first like, Pro Bowl how, season, bro. How was that like blocking for him, man? Bro, that man, bro. That's my first year starting. That's how I took T. Smith's spot. Um. He just told me, and he, you know, he was trying to revamp his shit too, yeah. coming from Baltimore. So he was like, "Yo, nigga, you gonna turn me up?" I said, "Nigga, I'ma turn you up, good. What the fuck is you saying? Nigga? Yeah. These niggas got me fucked up. They didn't, they, they didn't gave my boy the boot for me to come in and have a. Yeah. So I'm, I'm gonna show up, nigga. What the fuck is you talking about? We was on, we was on that. We was talking about popping shit. You feel me? We was together every day, and every day we was talking about popping shit, man." <laughs> I'm Ben G. Nigga had 1,300 yards, bro, and he missed six games. Mm. Hold on. His backup had 850 yards. We had two more niggas that had three, 400 yards. Yeah. But he had 1,300 yards and missed six games, bro. Damn. Me and him both went to the Pro Bowl that year. And 
Yeah, I know that just was a, awesome. Duo, man. man, that shit made me be like, it made me be like, nigga, you really supposed to be here, bro. Yeah. You really supposed to be here, bro. Like, you got some shit. Like, you know how you've been playing football all your life, and you know you got some shit with you that other people don't got. Yeah. That shit was like, I'm really like that now, cause I'm here with the dogs. It, you know what I'm saying? Like, it was a gut check. You know what I'm saying? For yourself, a self check. Like, man, what I'm doing up here with these niggas? Am I really? Stepping on him, I, I was stepping, man. Yeah. You had two seasons with him to where he ran a thousand yards. He Both. Played, he played three seasons, but he had with uh -huh. Cleveland, but he had two thousand yards seasons. He played two seasons. He played two years with season. He had a three year deal, but he played two. two. Yeah, he only played two on that three year deal. Um, bro. Oh, this another thing. I ain't never not had a thousand yard rush. I'm the only fullback to ever do that. Mm. I ain't never had a nigga go for another thousand behind me. Never. Jamal, Lamar, Lewis. Jamal Moore, yeah. Marco Murray, mm -hmm. Aaron Foster, Ben Tate. What about Peyton? Pa Pay oh, you're yeah. Peyton. Nigga, we, we made oh, Madden. Yeah. We made Madden. Yeah. Man, he had he had 1,300 yards, and he didn't even play tailback for, for like five, six games. Damn. Yes, bro. Yes. Bro, he made the cover of Madden yeah. in Cleveland. And we had a losing record. Make that shit make sense. Make that shit make sense. When has a man history as anybody ever did yeah. that shit? Like you say, with a losing record, bro. Man, that's how you know, bro. That's how you know. Y'all had, had a hell of a running offense. It just, y'all had big things going on. And then, like you say, y'all was in a tough ass division. Tough ass division. When um, our quarterback went down that year, you know what I'm saying? We we lost a bunch of quarterbacks that year, so it was just like, man, once you lose the head, man, it's kind of hard to recover from that shit. Nah, facts. So, I want to talk about the, the year you made Pro Bowl. How did you feel when you found out that you was a Pro Bowler, man? I cried. Yeah. I cried. But I knew it. I knew it, like, yeah. when you've been giving a lot of niggas work, and, and niggas start talking about you, you be like, yeah, okay, okay. And niggas don't be wanting to dap you like that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I want y'all to dap no nigga anyway, but I ain't being friendly with this shit. You know what I'm saying? So motherfuckers had to either respect it or goddamn me get the fuck out of the way. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm, I'm walking right through this shit. Yeah. So I, I presented myself as a young nigga, but I still... Had that big dog mentality, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Carry myself like a man. But when that shit hit, to put that stamp on there, mm -hmm. oh yeah. So it wasn't no more hiding then, though. No. Like, niggas knew I was coming in, so it was like, every game I had to bring that shit or else it was, shit, niggas was gonna try to, nigga, man, that shit embarrassed me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because once you get that name, hey, you gotta hold that motherfucker, man. You know what I'm saying? Because I, I had a couple of young uh, linebackers. You know? I had my little partner out to uh, Atlanta. What that nigga name was? It was a young nigga that we came. Uh, he was drafted first round. He was like, now I used to watch all your films, see how you was hitting niggas. Then I, I was coming in this whole bang with you, nigga. I wasn't let you embarrass me. I was like, that's what I'm talking about, little nigga. I liked it. Thank you. Thank you for saying you was watching my shit, bro. You know what I'm saying? I appreciate that. That let me know I ain't tripping. You know what I'm saying? As you know, years go by, like it's like an underrated, I say forgotten position. Yes. Like the fans, they yes. don't look at what these fullbacks do. These are the guys that are the reason why these running backs are getting to where they're at. Yes. The line. Yes. You know what I'm saying? It's because tight ends do not like that shit, bro. Yeah. They don't, I don't give a fuck who the tight end is. Yeah. He might like blocking, but that collision blocking is different. Yeah. That's different, huh? Yeah. That's Oklahoma drill every time. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. Nigga, we 10 yards apart going full speed. Ooh. Ain't nobody trying to stop. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yes. That shit's crazy. Like, like me just watching football, I'm watching you. I'm watching Bunte Leach. Yeah. I'm watching Mike Allstock, the white yeah. boy that, that's blocking and running motherfuckers. Yeah, the yeah. That's, I, I like Mike Allstock. Yeah. That's I used to fuck with Leach, too. So it's like, man, fullbacks, people don't really appreciate they don't. fullbacks. They sacrificing their body. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm.
Let me tell you what fullback is. Fullback is the ultimate sacrifice position because you don't get no glory, you don't get nothing, you don't get no stats. It ain't no stats and accolades with that shit. So people like, if you can't make stats about it, it ain't really good. That ain't true. How you think, motherfucker, crazy? How you think uh, securing the president keeps security with him, right? Yeah. But why? So nobody don't fuck with him. He can go secure the world. If he didn't have the security, could he be traveling the world and trying to secure the world? You feel me? Yeah. They don't get no stats now, but that security team is everything. So just like with that, that's how I feel I was. I feel like I was the security for them niggas, man. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Square business. I'm securing the premise, making sure the packages get there safe. You know what I'm saying? And, and everybody happy. Yeah. Uh, so, so you spent uh, from 06 to 2010, 2010 season, you with the Cleveland Browns. A year later, you become, you know, you join the home team. Got to come home. How, how was that, like, how did that go about, man? Um, time clock, I was dealing with some family stuff, too, with my dad. My dad had got diagnosed with cancer. So it was just like, he wouldn't have made it for them to even come get me if I didn't need to be here. Yeah. So that wasn't even no question. I had Dallas on the map mm -hmm. with Houston. I wanted to go to Dallas. I couldn't do it that year with my daddy. I had the opportunity to be here and for him to just not have to fly and all that shit and just, it was like, Lord, I was like, man, just go on and stay here a year. Because they gave me a two-year deal. Man. So we're going to talk about that season. Okay. You go to Houston. This is when the culture changes, it shifts, because that's when Texas is starting to finally do something. So you got Arian it, Foster, uh -huh. Jonathan Joseph, yeah. you. Chris Myers and Antonio Smith. Yeah. And some dogs. Okay? Yeah. How is this? Oh, I can't forget. Come on, you. Kind of boring. Boy, you ain't say Dre yet. Andre Johnson. Yeah. Man. So it's like. We was, was stacked, bro. Yeah, man. Dwayne Brown. Like, yeah. Man. How was that season like? How did you do it, man? <coughs> man, that was one of the best Texans teams we ever had. Yeah. Our chemistry was crazy. When I tell you, we was together mm -hmm. everywhere. Yeah. I'm talking about the whole team. Yeah. When you seen one of us, you seen everybody. It was like on some high school shit. Yeah. But niggas was tired of losing, too. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And they just put a group of dudes together who, they just put the right mix together at that yeah. time, bro. And I don't think they even knew what they was on doing both on both ends. They put, they brought the right type of guys. They had got some different type of character guys because I'm a different type of character guy. Yeah. You feel me? So they brought, you had him, you had me, you had Kobe. Kobe a different type of character guy. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So they brought getting personality, bro, to mix with everything. You know what I'm saying? They, they wasn't just getting one type of player. So they brought getting a lot of different personalities, bro, and I feel like we all messed together good because it showed on the field and off the field. And um, I had forgot one special, well, really, two two special people, man. These guys are also dogs, man. Shout out to uh, Coach D'Amico Ryan. Who, yes, sir. Who also played for the Texas and was your teammate as well. Yes, sir. And then you had J.J. Watt. Man. Yes, sir. It's how, deep. How, how intense was the practices, man? You know what? Our practices with the Texans, let me tell you this. We didn't touch each other. Okay. It was a no-hit rule. Um... But we had enough mature guys to understand that shit. We had a big team. A yeah. couple of young guys, but it was just enough of everything. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And with the Texans, that's what I did like. Like, we weren't trying to be too motherfucking physical at practice. Saving that shit for the game. Because what, what the fuck I'm going to do beating you up at practice? But we all knew how to practice. They had already had hardworking motherfuckers. Yeah. So they didn't have to push that upon us. You know what I'm saying? That was a blessing. But yeah, bro. Like, that... That's how they put together that year? Yeah. Yeah. And y'all, man, I got to talk about this this running duo. So, you was blocking for Ben Tate and Aaron Foster. That, that was a one-two punch right there. Hold on. Derek Ward. Oh, yeah. Derek Ward. Slayton. Slayton. Oh, yeah. 
Who else? Yeah, Slate. Slate. Slate was there with her. Yeah, Slate. Slate eight. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Slate. And it's like, was it the sophomore year he struggled? Was he hurt? Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. that's when Arian. He took off after that. Yeah. That's mm-hmm. when Arian took off. Yeah. That's when Arian took off. And when Faust took off, it was over with. Yeah. Cause Fox came in bagging him up. Then he took out that one year with Leach. Then next year I came in. Oh, yeah. Know what I'm saying? I was over with. Yeah. He was running up. Nigga, Fox had 1,400 yards. Tate had a thousand, bro. Mm. You know, 900 some yards Tate had. Cause he yeah. he hit his bonus. Yeah. I knew it. Cause I seen that motherfucker check. You know what I'm saying? He hit he up a 900 yards. He got a 500 thousand dollar bonus. You hear me? Yeah. Got that. We got that. Yeah. Them two together, cause it's like Foster was the dude who could who could shake you. He could run your ass over. He could run routes. You forgot that nigga got forty five million right after that, yeah. 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 Do it all. Bro got a forty five ball. Yeah. Tate, he was he shit. Tate. Tate left him with the Cleveland. Yeah. Ain't that crazy? Yeah. He went where I came from. Yeah. Told man, shit crazy, bro. Yeah, yeah, but that year. Y'all won the wild card. You know what I'm saying? Down the Bengals ass, but y'all lost to the Ravens. Yes. A close game. Yes. But honestly, I feel like I know you probably can't don't probably don't want to speak on I'm that. I'm not. Y'all was a quarterback away, man. No, time. oh hell no. You wanna know what it was? Yeah. He don't mind me saying this. Yeah. My partner, one of my best friends, Jacoby Jones. Yeah. Man. Motherfuckers was so hot at him for what he did. And I wasn't. I wasn't because he's a playmaker. Yeah. A playmaker. And they didn't allow Kobe to be who he needed to be yeah. mentally, to be who he needed to be physically. Yeah. I'm only saying that because he leaves us, goes to Baltimore, yeah. win one, run all yeah, the yeah, shits back. Yeah. Man, when you let a man be comfortable and let him play and quit trying to yeah. all this other shit, that was the only thing with the Texans that they didn't do. They tried to control the character guys. And you can't do that. You can't do that. That character is there for a reason. It's a spice to the gumbo. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah man. Yeah. yeah. Or else you just eating soup, my boy. <laughs> you feel me? No, facts. Yeah. So after you... uh. After you depart from Houston, going to Dallas. Yeah, on to the D. Yeah, with Jason Garrett, how was that coaching, man? Being man, that fan. shit was the best shit I ever experienced yeah. in my life. Because those fans crazy. Man, man, that was the best shit I've experienced in my life. I ain't going to let nobody, yeah. I don't care what nobody say, how they feel, bro. Yeah. Going to Dallas was a, uh, I needed it. Um, I would have stayed there my whole fucking career. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I, I would have been there my whole career. If I wouldn't have got hurt, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I wouldn't, I wasn't playing no more football, nowhere else. Dallas was gonna be my last stop, bro. Yeah. That bit was, it was dead live, like, but it made all the other years be, be worth something. You know what I'm saying? Because of the treatment, man. They always treat like a king in two years, bro. I'm talking about, I'm talking about. I made probably, I made half a million dollars off the field in Dallas. Man. Off the field. Yeah. Both years. Like, I've never experienced that. Yeah. Some money, but, bro, I'm talking about chicks off the field. Yeah. I fuck with Dallas. Dallas is forever in my heart, for real. And how was Jerry Jones? Because, you know, he gets a lot of. Like, he a player, man. They, they try to say he's racist, but I look at him as a businessman. Miss- I feel like he's fair. He shows, Miss- like, he has that reputation. He don't give a fuck what you did in the past. He want to win. He going he gonna to Let me say this. Yeah. And, and this is the. Honest to God, truth. Um, everybody is racist. In some form or fashion. Black people say white people, white people say black. Like, it depends on what type of racist you saying. Like, we all have, we deal with race shit all the time. So, we can be honest about that. Everybody do. But the thing is, is how you carry shit. How you carry shit. Just because I have an ugly thought, that don't mean that's who I am. It's a thought. It ain't even an action. Make sense? Yeah. So we're going to ban people for thoughts or we're going to ban people from their actions. And then even with people's actions, we still try to judge them off other shit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So 
If you ask me as a man racist, I'm going to tell you, hell no. Hell no. You ask me how I felt about him, I felt fucking good. He was, he was a player. Shit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because I understand business. And people who don't understand business ain't going to understand this conversation. And that's okay, too. Yeah. But you can't have a conversation about nothing that you don't understand or don't have no knowledge of. Yeah. You feel me? So until you've been in a position of being the owner, you can't speak on it. You can't even speak on shit about ownership. Yeah. Or if you don't run your own business, how you going to even speak in the problems and the shit that come with that? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, man, hey, I, 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 thought, I think he's a hell of a person, and, and I appreciate the opportunity he gave me. Yeah. And I, I see a lot of black, like a lot of black, Players like just speak highly of him, man. I don't know about, because, bro, he, he keep coming. Yeah. Let me say this, bro. If you ever want the un, uh, un uh, unjudgmental owner, you gotta play for him. Yeah. Because guess what? You know, I ain't gonna say he don't give a fuck about what you did. He do care. He do care because he want good humans working for him. Yeah. But he believe in he believe in you know what I'm saying redemption, bro. And and and, and who don't believe in forgiveness? I gotta fuck with a man who believe in forgiveness. You feel me? Because yeah. if you don't believe in forgiveness, then goddamn, what type of motherfucker is you? You feel me? Ain't nobody perfect, bro. By no form of fashion. So, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Just choose wisely how you choose to be with people. Nah, how was it like working with Tony Romo and Felix Jones, Murray, and Dez? Man, look, Dez like my little brother. Yeah. Murray was cool, cool dude. Felix was my dog. Yeah. Um, I had PT down there too, Patrick uh, Patrick Henderson, uh, no Patrick Thompson, my bad. Um, I had Lance Dunbar down there too with me, little running back from uh, Lance was I think. Uh, what's the school in Dallas? What you got? College. You say SMU? There you go. Yeah. They all went to Jamais Mecca. He um, that was the other little fullback I told you I had. All of them went to S. Uh, together, him and Lance, them, he came in there. He ended up going to, um, they released him, but I told him he was going to get picked up. He ended up playing like seven, eight years for fucking, um, the Raiders, bro. Yeah. After that nigga gave him game and backing up, you know what I'm saying? So, but to get to the last one, Romo, man, let me tell you this. That is the most underrated fucking quarterback I've ever been around, bro. And, I would just tell you this. Yeah, he made mistakes. Like, we all make mistakes. But i tell you what, that motherfucker made way more shit happen than he did mistakes. And that motherfucker know where that ball supposed to be. He know where the ball supposed to go. And a lot of shit don't be his fault that he take blame for. And I fuck with him because he take that shit on the chin. He'll never tell y'all that, that that wasn't, you know what I'm saying? That was somebody else's fault. You know what I'm saying? Because I've been in the room with this man, and they'll throw of coverage up on the board, say a route, boom, where the ball supposed to go? Bam, he'll hit you with it. I watch him do it every day. I'm somebody. The man was a bad motherfucker, man. Yeah. yeah. I, I fuck with Romo. You, I know you know those guys that call it spade to spade, man. Yeah. And just to see how T.O. had talked about him in the press conference, he was emotional. You can tell what type of guy he is. Mm -hmm. For sure, man. For sure. But I, I want to ask you this question. <clears throat> Because a lot of fans and a lot of people are curious. What happened after that season? What made you like just just like retire or just take a break from football, man? You know what, bro? I never told nobody this. That season with Dallas, the end of the year, I go do my end of the season exam. Mm -hmm. I had nine herniated discs in my neck and back. Yeah. And I couldn't make it through the offseason because two of my discs exploded. My L4 and my L5. Um, these are discs. They exploded. They like this fucking big in your spine, right? So they exploded in my back and they had to take that shit out of my back. You feel me? Yeah. And so they made seven more of them that didn't, but they herniated. So I was like, yeah, they bust. Fuck that. I was, man, I was paralyzed for five months, bro. I hid from everybody. I was paralyzed for five months. I wasn't even walking. I had to go have surgery and everything. I built myself back up to this, bro. Mm -hmm. What you see now is you know, God's work. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So that's why I sat down, bro. I never told nobody. Everybody thought I just, nah, bro, I was injured. Yeah. 
I'm talking about fucked up, fucked up. Still fucked up, but hey man, God just he keep finding a way, bro. He keep finding a way. So man, so life after football, what was just going through your mind? Cause you were, you were still young at the time, right? When you Thirty. Man, still, you know some guy retired. Uh, I'm gonna time. tell you, I'm gonna tell you why life for me wasn't hard. Yeah. I had already had a plan. I'm gonna get this bread. Either they gonna pay me, or see it, or. Lord forbid anything bad happen to a nigga. I'm putting insurance on myself to where me and my family took and kept up forever. Yeah. And shit, one of the other happened. Yeah. So, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Here we is. But I gambled on myself. You know what I'm saying? And then at the end of the day, nigga, when you been broke for so long and ain't had shit, man, you ain't going back to that shit. That's just something. That's just a no, bro. That's just a no, bro. That's just a no, bro. I ain't work all them years just to come back and have to. Nah. Yeah. Nah. Was that insurance, was it like <clears throat> personal insurance or something with the Personal and NFL. Yeah, because I, I seen you talk about it on the podcast. Yeah. Are you able to speak on it? Yeah, I'm able to speak on it. That was some pain, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, it is. It's, um, yeah. I'm able to speak on it. It's this. Yeah. I'm going to tell you like this. We all buy shit. I can buy this right now. And I ain't trying to market nothing, but I can buy this, right? Now, uh, <clears throat> that soda can gonna have some type of value to it, but it's gonna have some little bitty words yeah. somewhere on there that we just ain't gonna read. Yeah. You feel me? Yeah. Cause it's the little bitty words. My advice to everybody, Read them little bitty words. And what I mean by that is, a lot of times we left out because we don't know or we ain't read or we ain't pay attention. And with them paying attention and with contracts, there's always stipulations and different things that come within them contracts. So make sure you understand it before you sign up for some shit. <clears throat> and make sure how you can always win at the end of the day in whatever situation you're in. Cause that's the only reason you in the situation is to win. So make sure you win by any means. Understood. Yeah. I got two big questions for you. Come on. Last All right. How you feel about the state of Colorado since Coach Prime is there? You know he didn't uh, turn it around. Got hella recruits, hella transfers. How do you feel about Colorado? What Prime say? He coming. Yeah. We coming. Yeah. We coming. I'm. I'm more than excited, bro. Um, when you go to a place like Colorado and you want us, this shit right here with Prime is like Obama getting in office. You feel me? Yeah. This is like Obama. You remember recession? Obama come through. Well, somebody get man. We 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 say yeah. that's that's the type of effect Prime got, man. Yeah. yeah. Him, I respect him as a player. Shit, I respect him as a man, as a father. Uh, everything he stands for, man, the man teaching greatness. And he affirmed believe in God. So with that alone, scratch everything else with him. With that alone, man, I'm for him. Yeah. We ain't got to go down his accolades, but with that alone, I'm for him. Yeah, I'm pretty excited because I want to see uh... Colorado versus TCU. I'm yes, bro. That. That's yes. A, a high game, so. You're going to see, I think what you're going to see from Colorado is you're going to see how a man can put something in your mental. Yeah. He he don't just exercise their body. He exercise them kids' mental, man. Yeah. He want them mentally just as strong as anything. You know, that's the most dangerous thing a man could ever be is mentally prepared. Bro, you know what I'm saying? The physical, yeah, but the mental? That means you can't be broken, bro. And he building them not to break. I respect that, bro. I respect that. Yeah. For sure. And we're down to the nitty gritty, man. What's up with it? I want to know that Christmas game when y'all played Baltimore. Yeah. What happened? I'm getting a story. I'm getting a story. I'm gonna give you the story. 
<laughs> okay, so. And that was the beginning of the game. Yeah. That was the beginning. Pre-game. Pre-game. Yeah. All right. I'm watching uh, TV. Just so happened I'm in the hotel. It's Sunday morning, bro. We played them a little bit later. So it's early. I go get breakfast. I'm sitting up. I'm about to, I'm, I call my daddy for every game. But this is what he called me this morning. He say, you seen that motherfucker? I say, what you talking about, daddy? Motherfucker Ray Lewis. Motherfucker talking shit. I say, he doing what? He say, he talking shit. I say, I say, what he say? He say, he going to destroy the Cleveland Browns run game and a lead blocker. I say who? They lead blocker. Yeah. Like, oh, so nigga ain't say my name. He say they lead blocker. Yeah. Oh, so he did. Okay, 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 he a hoe. Bet. Yeah. He a hoe. I'm checking it. My dad say, look here. I don't give a fuck what you do. You see that motherfucker? Put up on that motherfucker, tell that motherfucker you gonna kick his ass all motherfucking day. Yeah. You hear me? He say, son, you let that motherfucker know. You hear me, goddammit? I'm yeah, dad, I got you. Bitch, go kick the ass. I love you. Bye. Hung up on me. You know what I'm saying? So that ain't the end. Mind you, Saturday we do pregame, right? We in the uh, whole team in there, you know what I'm saying? We're in there chopping it up. So just so happened, you know, my whole my whole teammates, my whole coach, they know I don't, I don't fuck with that nigga. Every every time we get ready to play them, they know I just be on one that week. Like, don't fuck with me. Like, I'm in my bag that week. Everything serious. I ain't doing no plan. So, um, team, well, I had a whole speech for y'all. But I think I'm going to get up and I'm going to let somebody else talk. I'm still sitting like, who the fuck's going to come in the room? They say, Vic, come on up here, man. Tell us how you feel about Ray. <laughs> Walk up to the front. I said, man, fuck Ray. Fuck Sugar. Fuck all that whole ass shit. We're going to kill these bitches tomorrow. Good night. I love y'all. I fuck with y'all. Bye. Boom. Yeah. Walk out the meeting room. Everybody, yeah! Hey! Who are you? You know what I'm saying? I'm on one. Now he really got me high because, you know what I'm saying? They, they picking at me, yeah. but they know how to, you know what I'm saying? Man, the first, hold up, bro. The first four plays of the game is all run plays, isos, right at him. That's how much they fuck with me when they know we're about to play Baltimore. Every time. You don't trust me, go back and watch every game if you see Cleveland when I'm there. We play Baltimore when I'm playing. First four plays of the game gonna all be runs at him. Man, check this. So, I'm in the motherfucking locker room. We chilling. We're gonna go off a pregame. I'm crunk. Now I'm getting in my mode. I'm thinking about all bad shit that happened. Motherfuckers trying to fuck with me. take shit from my kid. I'm just putting myself, I'm putting, I'm putting stink on top of stink. On nigga and said something to my T Jones. I'm 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 putting that shit on me. Yeah. You feel me? I want to be in the most nastiest mood possible. <laughs> you feel me? Yeah. Man, nigga, I get out there in that pregame. I sit with the woman. I see that nigga. But we, you know how both teams come up to the part to where they start running the offenses. Yeah. We coming up to there, and I just all I kept hearing my daddy say was, "Check that hoe, nigga. Check that hoe, nigga." I'm like. They come in that little running back, I mean that little linebacker group. Fuck. I tell myself, fuck it. I walk, I, I skate over there. Everybody know what I'm on already. You know what I'm saying? Like, niggas is not lost. Look, I hear my partner, oh, they go big, they go big, they go big. I go over there, bitch, bitch ass yeah, nigga. You gonna destroy the, the running game and they lead blocker? Bitch ass yeah, nigga, say my name, nigga. Say my name, cuz. What was wrong with you? Say my name, bitch ass nigga. What? What is you talking about? You know what I'm saying? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, Bust a loogie in that nigga shit. So, yeah, bitch, fuck you too, bitch. What is you talking about? All you niggas, it's up. It's up on all you niggas today. You go watch that play. First play of the game, I'm hunting that bitch down. I, I drag his bitch ass all through the ground. Just like that. Then I come in the hole one play, this bitch fall to his feet because he know I'm finna. I grab him. I grab, I grab him while he down there, pick him up and mm! eat. Fuck is you saying? Yeah. For real, on me. On me, bro. On my daddy, bro. Yeah. Not lying to you. I, hate, I, I just dislike that nigga, man. Yeah. 
I just like him because he ain't give me my respect. So I said, I'm going to beat his ass until he give it here. Real yeah. shit. I'm going to kick his ass every chance I got. And even if I would have seen that nigga win, if we was out in public somewhere, I would have whooped his ass on me. Still will to this day. Motherfucker poked me in my eyes one time, bro, because I was banging his ass. Man. I'm talking about trying to hit me with one of them. Mm, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, man. So it's forever fuck him, man. He on my hit list forever. I just gotta ask you this, man. Give me your, besides you said, give me your top five fullbacks. Oh. Lorenzo Neal, number one. Uh, Mike Allstott. Right. I'm gonna go with. Uh, Sam Mack, old school nigga. Uh, oh, I gotta go with my boy from Dallas. What was Dallas? Uh, fullback. No cut. Uh, no. Moose. What was it Moose? Dallas fullback. Oh. With him, was <coughs> uh huh. Any move? Or cut? This one I'm trying to see right now. That's it. Was he number number forty eight? Yeah. Hey, I'm trying. I'm trying. I'm trying to. Forty eight. Forty four. Forty eight. Hey, I'm trying to get that right name. Yeah, he was big. Him. Uh, Daryl Johnson. There you go. Yeah. There you go. Daryl Johnson. Um, um, uh, Baltimore had a little McClain. Yeah. Baltimore had a little nigga that was fullback, tailback around that time. McClain. He used to get busy too. Uh, McClain. And, uh, who, who else had one? Um, they had a little white boy play in San Diego. He was fullback, cold. Like, it's, it's a couple. Of them. I can't think of the name. Yeah, it's like. Yeah, but no, Lorenzo Neal is my number one all time. That's who I learned from. I met him, yeah. had conversations with him. He gave me game. That's who I uh, ended up, uh, spot I took in the Pro Bowl. Lorenzo Neal, bro. Because yeah. he had a. Uh, he was, was going to have surgery. He ended up having surgery after the season so I could go. Yeah, bro. <clears throat> Lorenzo Neal, bro, forever. Like, good dude, bro. Shout out to all the fullbacks. Shout out to all the fullbacks in the league, it's man. There's so many good ones, man. There's some that's doing their thing right now. Like, you got Adam yeah. Gingo, you got Andrew Bick, Patrick, you know, McCard uh, from Baltimore. Yeah. Old dude from San, I mean, not San Francisco. Yeah, I was about to say San Fro. 44. Yeah. He doing his thing. So, man, and then you had um, one person I seen play fullback and tight end, and Hernandez. He was nasty, man. He was a fool. Fast shit. He was, he was, he was a fool. Yeah, man. Rest in peace. Rest in peace for sure, man. Shit show, man. The day I have it, man, we had a good time. With yeah. You know what I'm saying? The big dog Lawrence Vickers, man. Yeah. First interview. Yeah. And Many more to come, man. For sure, man. Thank you for everything, for sure. Thank you, Cam. And, and y'all stay in tune, man, because... Hey, there's gonna be some great things happening. You know what I'm saying? Just, just stay on the uh, lookout for. Man, war babies, man, war yes, babies. Yes, sir. Yes, sir.